Hello, welcome back. It's the Clay Golem here. We're in Foundry VTT, of course, where we are for almost all of these videos these days. Um, and we're back in Stormwreck Isle, which is a bit weird because we finished this. Why are we back here? Uh, so in previous video, a couple of videos ago, we looked at one of the add-ons for Forian's quest log. Um, and it looks really good. And I think that's going to serve us really well, um, or serve me and my players really well. So that's what I'm going to be doing, is um, going through in this video and creating the quests for Stormwreck Isle and just putting them in here so we can have a bit of a play um, rather than just me making up silly things about finding a bucket of fish in the, in the cellar. Um, putting this stuff in and see what happens. So currently our quest log is completely empty, which is good. Uh, and I've got Stormwreck Isle in the other window, of course, so I can see what's going on. Um, and all I really need to do is to have a whiz through the adventure and pick out where the actual quests are. And there's, there's not that many um, in here. So first of all, I'm going to add a new quest. First thing I'm going to do, weirdly enough, is um, is edit the description because I can mostly copy and paste this stuff over from the actual module. Uh, and then from that, we can use it to uh, to build what we want. So Tarek is, easy, is eager to establish contact with the Myconids uh, of the sea caves. Now I've got a choice. Remember we talked about subquests here. What do I do? Do I create this as a quest for Tarak um, with objectives which is going to be one or do I create and I wonder can I do this? Can I do this? Um, I wondered. <laughs> Says you can drop an actor item or journal entry in there. I just wondered. Uh, I'm wondering if we create a um, a quest for Stormwreck Isle. So can I drag Dragon's Rest in there? Uh, yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Okay, but that's fine. I think what we're going to try and do for this one, because there's not huge amounts of quests for uh, Stormwreck Isle, I think we're going to create one quest log with multiple subquests in it because all of those quests are coming from here um you know from the um what's it called dragon's rest that's it so um let's call this aiding dragon's rest let's call it that okay so that's the main uh, that's the main, um, you know, quest heading. Okay, and I can find a different, obviously, an actual image for that. Um, GM notes. Uh, I could put everything in there. Manage quests. Don't need to do. Um, are we going to have overall rewards for completing all of those things? We kind of are, actually, sort of, uh, because as long as I can get this right, um, once they complete all the other quests, they actually get a copy of the Moonstone Key. Um, that's what they get from um, R R R Renara, whatever her name is. Um, here she is, she's down here. Um, yeah, that's what they get kind of as a reward. They help enough other people and it's like, all right, then we can trust you with the key. So I'm going to pop that in there. Might move it later, you know. <laughs> Good. Okay, so this is our main quest thread is going to be. Uh, aiding Dragon's Rest. Uh, I don't really need that description in there anymore. Um, I will change that. Um manage quest i'm going to configure permissions i want observers yes by default which is good uh, i want to create a sub quest please finish right okay we had this before when we were looking at it it wants us to effectively close that to save it before we then uh, uh, no see i don't know what i'm doing we looked at it and it was like it's br brilliant but then i haven't actually used it it's why i wanted to do this okay we now got a sub quest great so this is where I can paste in Tarak, um, Tarak's thingy. So Tarak is eager to re-establish contact with the Myconoids of the Sea Caves. He asked the characters to visit the caves to find out what's wrong with the Myconoids. Okay, so we can, in theory, go to our, I think they're under NPCs for Stormwreck. Um, we can use this image here. Yep, because it's about talking with those, which is fine. So uh, now he's going to be quite open about what's going on here. Uh, 
yeah, you can see I can't type. Sorry if I'm a bit hesitant, but because I've not done this for a real quest before, my brain is trying to work while I'm typing, while I'm thinking and trying to talk to you guys as well. So apologies for that. So this quest is inactive, but it's a sub-quest of aiding Dragon's Rest. I'm going to call it Myconoid Rescue because I can call it whatever the hell I like. <laughs> That's what I'm going with. Um, so the objectives are going to be... Um, discover what ails the myconids. Okay, so that's one objective that they need to do. Um, bring some heart caps back to what's his name? Tarak. Whoops. Bring some heart cap heart cap mushrooms back to Tarak. Oh, it is actually Friday today. <laughs> okay. He warns them about the fungal octopus the myconoids have created as a garden and tells them um, they'll probably have to fight the creature to gain access to the caves. He also gives them a foul-smelling sack of food scraps to give the myconoids as a gesture of friendship. He finally gives them two potions of healing. Now, he gives them two potions of healing at this point. So these are, if we go to our potions, we can actually dump these in here. They can see them and we can unlock them straight away. So if you remember when we looked at that um, and Haley stole the rations before undertaking any of the quest, in this case, we're happy for them. If they decide to accept this quest, they can then access and take those potions of healings immediately. Yep, happy with that. Good. So that's essentially what we want this quest to do. Now I want to jump to the sea caves one, to the actual um, sea caves uh, area, and just check what the... Uh, chapters are in that with regard to the quest items so uh, da, 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 they've got to get there uh, so obviously I'm scanning in the other window sorry that's not very interesting for you um, interacting with them must convince them da, 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 indifferent rapport spores distress spores etc um, something about the entrance tunnel this is just trying to get in there really um, running the combat, treasure, uh, the larder, the circle chamber. So six mycanoid adults are here, two of them are tending to the other four uh, who are standing stock still in a dreamlike trance. Yep, blah, blah, blah. Um, so far, we haven't found out what's wrong with anything. Um, have I missed something there? Interacting with them. To convince them they are to, uh, to convince the hostile myconoid to converse or allow the characters to do anything, they must make a DC 20 charisma check. Um, da, 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 da. Nasty smell pervades the caves. Myconoids know that the crystal cave area is the source of the odor. Uh, and Sinensa fell ill after going to that cave to investigate the issue. So we are we know that one of the objectives is going to be investigate the crystal cave. Now that is going to be a hidden objective. So first of all, he's going to ask them to do those two things immediately. We're going to keep investigate the crystal cave hidden because that's actually going to be a quest given by one of the myconoids. Okay, so we're going to keep that secret at the moment. And once they've had that conversation and they find out that piece of information, then they can go and do that. Okay, so that's how we're going to work that bit. Um, so Sinensia's sanctum, uh, they're tending to her. The adults collect spores from a barrel-sized glowing red fungus. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba, the crystal cave. Okay, so that's kind of pretty much it. Uh, the heart of the problem is duh, 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 treasure, duh, 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 ending this chapter. If the characters destroy the orange crystal so the toxic fumes can escape the caves, the myconoid's attitude improves to friendly. So Nensa then regains consciousness the following morning. If characters are present, then she gives them a uh, gives them the ruby morale. 
uh, moral, sorry, from area B4 and permission to keep any other treasure or mushrooms they collected in the caves. So we could have an objective of destroy uh, destroy the orange crystal. We could have that in there. Again, a hidden objective. They're not going to find it. They've got to investigate the cave. They may or may not destroy the crystal at that point, but they will be asked to destroy it if they don't automatically do it. So again, a hidden objective, that one. Um, once the return to... Do, 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 Okay, sorry. Uh, once the characters return to Dragon's Rest, Tarek can use the Ruby Morale Morel, um, to make an Elixir of Health. So have we got an Elixir of Health? Uh, no, we haven't. Oh, that's interesting. I would have thought that would be... Uh... Okay. So there isn't an elixir of health in there. I mean, we can swap it out for something else that we want. Of course we can. Um, something that would be similar to that. Um, or we can go and create it. That's fine. So what does elixir of health actually do? When you drink it, it cures any disease and removes blinded, deafened, paralyzed, poisoned conditions. Um, so we might need to create that as, an, as a completely separate item if we wanted to do that. The other thing we could do is um yeah like i say we could just choose something else we could do restorative ointment what's actually that do um can be swallowed or applied to the skin that's just ceases to be poisoned cured of any diseases so we could give them that instead just because i can't be <laughs> just because i i can't be bothered to create a new item right now um we'll stick it over there anyway yes get rid of that much better practice to drag it in from over here. Okay, so that's going to be a hidden thing. Um, oh no, we can have it... We can have it visible but locked, so they can't take that. That's what he's going to give them. Now, we did also see that... Um, what was uh, Sinensa going to give them? Um, it said... Uh, gives them the ruby morel from b5 so that they haven't already found that they get one of them as well i don't know about that yet that's going to be a reward um so they can collect other mushrooms etc etc uh that's potentially a reward that they could be given if they don't already find it themselves um, and they can be given that as part of the reward all right so how do we feel about this at the moment? Um, so I've got a bit of description in there. Just the players are going to be able to read this. Is eager to re-establish um, contact with the myconoids of the sea caves. He asks you, the characters. He asks you. Click edit. Click edit. Tarek is eager to read. He asks. You to visit the caves, find out what's wrong with the myconoids, and bring back some heart cap mushrooms. Now, I should be able to. Let's just check. Drop that in there. Do I need to? No. Um, but then they know that's an item. He warns you about a... Fungal octopus the myconoids have created as a guardian and tells you and tells you you'll probably have to fight the creature to gain access to the caves. He also gives you, because remember they're reading this, a foul smelling sack of food scraps they can give to the myconoids as a gesture of friendship. Finally, he gives you two potions of healing we don't need the description in there okay and they probably don't actually need to be able to click on there either um in fact actually let's do that 
and replace it with that. Okay, save that. So they know they're looking for these heart cap mushrooms. Uh, they know that they're going to be given those two potions for healing and they're going to be here available for them to actually take. Um, and uh, he doesn't... Let's add a little bit on here. If you are able to help my con... Uh, my con nids <laughs> and bring back a ruby morale he wanted wasn't it so bring back a ruby morale tarak will be able to make a rest restorative ointment for you as a reward <laughs> as a reward okay so the players will be able to read that i've got an extra space in there oh, i don't need to yeah bigger it's going to just make me twitch Okay, so Tarek is e eager to reestablish contact with the Myconoids of the Sea Caves. He asks you to visit the caves, find out what's wrong with the Myconoids, and bring him back some heart cap mushroom. Uh, he warns you about a fungal octopus um, the Myconoids have created as a guardian and tells you you'll probably have to fight the creature to gain access to the caves. He also gives you a foul-smelling sack of food you can give to the Myconoids as a gesture of friendship. Finally, he gives you two potion of healing. If you're able to help the Myconoids and bring back a Ruby Morel, Tarak will be able to make a restorative ointment for you as a reward. Okay, good. So that's all in there, and they've got that tantalizing being able to see it but not touch it. Um, good, right. Happy with that. Um, now, this is inactive, so let's close this. Uh, manage quest. We don't want any more sub quests within there. That's fine. Um, and then. Let's close that. So what have we got at the moment? We have got inactive quest aiding Dragon's Rest, uh, including Myconoid Rescue, whether they've got two objectives. That's a sub one of that. And of course, so what we might want to do, aiding Dragon's Rest, we set that as available so they can, oh, okay. They can click in here um, and they can see that. I'm gonna get rid of that don't need that now um, but this one is currently inactive until they talk to him as soon as they talk to him we can make it active and then they should be able to then have that conversation so I don't want them to be able to go and pick up all those quests as soon as they log in um, it's not going to be till they've got to Dragon's Rest and have met people that we're going to want to do that okay fuel okay that seemed like a bit long-winded didn't it uh, we should get quicker <laughs> maybe <laughs> uh, so right the shipwreck then so again this is going to be a sub quest of this um, aiding dragons rest yep add a sub quest to this um, what we want is uh, in dragons rest whoops a daisy I'm just being a muppet on the other side um, yeah, so the shipwreck. Several ships have been crashed on the rocks. No survivors. Varnoth and Rix witnessed the most recent wreck. They saw the ship abruptly veer off course and crash into the rocks. So let's copy and paste that into here for now. So several ships have recently crashed off the rocks uh, north of Dragon's Rest and sunk with no survivors. And a few days ago, both Varnoth and the Cobold Rix witnessed the most recent wreck. Uh, they saw the ship abruptly whoop, uh, abruptly veer off course and crash into the rocks. And they suggested the characters might help the island by discovering what caused the crash. Uh, if the characters ask Rana about it. Um, right. So we don't want to put that there. How might do this? So we want an objective. Ask Renara about the recent shipwrecks. There we go. That's an objective. 
Uh, we can have that one visible as part of this. Um, and that is the kind of thing uh, edit you stupid boy <laughs> sharp <laughs> uh, that is the sort of thing that will kind of go in GM notes I mean I'm probably not going to be using the GM notes very much at all but uh, just so that we can do that so the players are going to be able to read this bit um, um, uh, you might want to come up with better names than I'm coming up with uh, also some icons and things like that now this is talking about this is one that uh, Varnoth so why don't we drag Varnoth in here as the, the actor for this one she's effectively giving this quest um, so that's in there um, okay investigate the um, compass rose shipwreck that's going to be an objective that they are given as part of as soon as they've spoken to Renara about it um, then they are going to be given that quest objective to go and do that which is good uh, da, 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 da. so need to jump to excuse me just jumping to uh, the cursed shipwreck um, da, 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 da. overview shipwreck features running this harpy's return ending this chapter if they defeat the harpy so was there any other quests to actually pick up in here um, that's about the harpy's return about Orcus um, after the characters find the captain's chest and they come up from the hole to the lower deck they hear a heavy thump as the harpy lands on the main deck yeah not interested in that um, but it has, there is the journal okay what does the journal actually have to do with the quests specifically uh, if they open it air bubbles rush out blah 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 chest contains a pouch um, it contains a captain's journal okay yeah but what do, they, what do they do with journal apart from reading it um, but I think what we do is turn the captain's journal to Renara okay that's going to be again an objective that once they find the captain's journal that might be the right thing to do with it now they might choose not to give it back to her of course but that's fine okay so ending this chapter then um if they defeat a harpy blah 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 if they find the talisman in the hold they can solve the zombie problem entirely uh, if they bring the talisman to renara and explain what they found in the captain's log ah uh, so rather than that but let's edit this one return right don't return the journal return uh Elith talisman to Renara that's what we want to actually do um, da, 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 he died many years ago he was laid to rest in the graveyard at the top of the cliffs blah 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 uh, the graves in the graves in the little cliff top cemetery are covered with wildflowers marked with simple wooden crosses if the characters laid the talisman at his grave bury it in soil over the grave or burn it atop the grave the wind seems to sign relief and it puts all the undead right okay um let's just call it undead shipwrecks whatever okay so essentially um What's his name? Blastos. Okay, so again, I'm going to leave that one hidden. So they're going to ask about the shipwrecks. They're then going to be asked to investigate the Compass Rose shipwreck. Uh, they're going to do all of that, blah, 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 blah. And in theory, they're going to find um, the talisman 
Um, and if they suggest that they're, they're going to return that to, to Renara, they can take that with them. Then they can work out where the grave is. And if they wanted to, to do that, of course, they might just pocket the talisman, which is why I'm like, they don't know about these yet. Uh, okay, again, so it's quite straightforward. What rewards do they get from this? I don't think they get anything apart from the loot that they find. Um, if the characters undo the talisman's curse, the next day they sleep, the cleric character has another dream. Oh, yeah, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not happy with that particular arc. So there's no actual rewards for them for this one, except what they find. And, and I'm fine with that. Yeah, you don't get paid for every single job you do, whether you like it or not. Okay, so now look, subquests here. We're now building the Myconoid Rescue and Undead Shipwrecks. So we've got two. Lovely, it's working, isn't it? Working. So again... Inactive, we've got Myconoid Rescue, we've got Undead Shipwrecks, but only Aiding Dragon's Rest is available. They would have to... Let's set that in progress. So that's going to show in there. Uh, set as failed, set as inactive. Okay, so I'm going to leave them all as inactive until they get there. Then I'm going to, once soon as they start in... in involving themselves with the rest of the characters around all the NPCs and stuff around here then I'm going to make that available and start adding these ones as available as and when they start to actually do stuff okay right gosh right what other ones are there I mean there's not many to do for this but uh, again, this is a bit of a slow process because I'm now going backwards and doing them rather than creating them as we go along. Um, and I may well do the next lot offline so you guys don't have to sit through me doing this. Right, so Dragon's Rest then. Uh, again, back to here, I'm looking at the Cloister quests. Uh, we've got the Caves, we've got the Shipwrecks, um, and then we've got the Lost Wormling. So let's... Uh, we want to go into this one. Uh, oh, look, yeah, you can make these active through here. Okay, that's interesting. Manage quest. We want another set sub quest here. Um, and this is the Lost Wormling. Uh, and of course, that Lost Wormling is actually uh, it's a bronze dragon, isn't it? Yeah. That, that will do for now. That will do for now. You don't need to. <laughs> right. Once characters prove themselves trustworthy and competent in dealing with the zombies, the myconoids and the shipwreck, Renara decides it's time to confide in them. She summons them to the temple area five. Now, where did I put that key? Did I? This is quite important. Did I put that key as a reward here? I did. So we're going to say that we want them to complete Myconoid rescue and undead shipwrecks once they have they can get this reward. Okay, that's fine um, Let's go back into can I just click on it from here? I can yep, we're good uh, da, 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 da. Outlines the story um, it Given in the adventure background she tells them that the bronze whirling da, 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 da. I'm gonna copy and paste this over rather than me just reading it and mumbling um, Renara so, and remember they're not just going to read this this is weird they're going to be doing this sort of through role play in that conversation this is a summary so that when they come back and look at it they can go oh, yeah that's right that's what we were doing Renara tells you that a bronze worm named um, Adron came to the island a few months ago and studied with her at the Dragon's Rest. Uh, five days ago, before your arrival, he argued with her, angrily rejecting her teachings of peace and stormed away from the cloister. She fears he went to the, she fears he went to the ancient observatory on the southeast side of the island, which is another dragon's final resting place. Uh, she suspects some evil has arisen there, but says she dare not go there herself, lest her presence, of course, reopen old wounds. She gives you a moonstone key. Ah, I'm wondering then if actually what we want to do, have I been slightly premature? I think we ought to give it here. They can see it. 
and take it right now um, at the beginning of this quest once this quest is revealed to them. Okay, so it gives you a moonstone key. Duh, 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 hex of Rhythm. Dragon's Head and explains that you'll need it to access the observatory. Uh, okay. Fine, fine. What actually happens when she gets. <laughs> so we need to now pop over to the part of the chapter, the uh, Clifftop Observatory. Uh, and in the module, I'm really, I'm just jumping to the end bit. It talks about Spark Render's ritual, uh, da, 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 with dragon spirits, um, freeing. Okay. <sighs> so we want them to uh, objectives in investigate the blimey what's it called the clifftop observatory investigate the clifftop observatory that's the quest they're actually going to be given initially to do um, it's going to be quite clear that they're going to need to rescue Adron but they don't know that until they get there and find out what the situation is um, disrupting the ritual again they don't necessarily know that that's what needs to be done and a really good thing is is part of it you can link you can link apologies my phone going off um, part of this is and having these extra steps you might kind of go well there's no direct reward associated with it but you can assign and go well it's 100 xp for rescuing um adron you get 100 xp for disrupting the ritual however you want to do that whether you know obviously if you're using xp rather than milestones uh, manipulate the effigies um destroying the effigies manipulate the structure that's all ways of disrupting the ritual so we don't care how they do it uh, ending the adventure is with Adron in tow. The characters can return victorious to Dragon's Rest. Renara is pleased with the bronze dragon's safe return. As a reward, she gives each of the characters a potion of healing. They do like their potions of healing as reward for this. Um, now, again, depends how many players you've got, doesn't it? <laughs> so I'm just going to slap four out there on the assumption there's four players. Or it might be a case of like, no, there's only four deal with it if you've got five players they can argue amongst themselves okie dokie um an exquisite pearl worth a hundred gold of course it's going to be something we haven't got um now it doesn't have to be a pearl does it what have we got that is worth a hundred gold if anything probably nothing um all right we're gonna have to create it come on <laughs> so let's uh duplicate this one let's open it up and this is going to be a pearl. Uh, it's worth 100, 100 gold pieces. Um, I haven't got an image for it. Give me two moments. I will update an image of pearl. Okay, sorry about that, um, but I should be able to now go into my items and things, uh, be able to choose a file, go into my items here. Here's a picture of a pearl that I'm going to use. There we go, that will do. Um, yes, I could make it nicer, of course I could, um, but you guys don't want to sit around forever watching me just do that. Okay, so we now got a pearl that I can drag over here um, uh, and just check again. The pearl worth 100 gold uh, and says you're welcome to stay at Dragon's Rest as long as you wish. Yeah, nice. Um, if Spark Render is dead, she grieves the death of yet another dragon but doesn't condemn you for it. Um, if your players wish to continue, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so that's it. So 
that's an awful lot of work they need to go to for very little reward so what basically through this whole quest arc for this whole thing um the undead shipwrecks it's only what they find myconoid rescue it's a couple of healing potions um and one salve that's it and what they can nick um <laughs> the lost wormling it's one pearl worth 100 gold some potions of healing and again that's it this is a poorly paid adventure arc it's all about the loot and that's fine because this is for introductory characters we don't want to be running around with really powerful magic items by the time they hit sort of level three right okay so uh let's close that close that close that check are we happy now remember this is telling us is one out of th out sorry they've got zero out of one objectives even though we know there's more objectives there's two objectives there's one objective but there will be more objectives added on as they do it so i think that is probably our journal done from a point of view of what the the players will see and experience um yeah i could absolutely have better icons for these and things uh, a bit of time and effort to go into those kind of details really really would make a difference um i could use a, a, a picture of a shipwreck for this one um not too ha unhappy with you know this image just bearing in mind if i hover over it, it tells me what it is um lost wormling i need to sort that one out that's not right at all uh, but there we go so this is it in action uh, and that's now in our actual live game ready to go um, obviously just try, just let me just get rid of my loot on the side here make people twitch by how messy that is <laughs> um, but yeah so that's the whole of dragons of stormwreck isle we've done in one video of creating up all their quest arcs and i think as we do more of those one it's going to be much much quicker because we know what we're doing uh, and two, if we did it as we went along, that again would be much, much quicker. And I also suspect that using the Forian's quest log um, combined with our Figma, we could actually start off by going, well, with Figma, we can lay out some basics. We can use Forian's uh, quest log to actually map out all of the quests that we want them to be able to do and then build our adventure based on the quest lines. Just, do you know what I mean? Rather than let's put in all of our encounters and then build quests, actually let's build quests and then find encounters to fit them um, and build that way. And in, for my mind, if I'm creating my own adventures, that's the direction I come from, is what are the quests, what needs to be done? What is the big bad doing? Um, what's the situation? And then encounters are actually the last thing I create um, out of the whole thing. So anyway, there we go. Dragon's Rest all done. We have a working quest log for that. Um, obviously, we need to then go through and do the entire of Fandelva and below. Um, we've already got that mapped out, which is quite useful. Um, in Figma, we just need to put it into the diary. So I hope this has been interesting and not too waffly and not too kind of distracted. Um, obviously, you know, it's a bit challenging when we do these things for real the first time, but uh, we'll get better at them. Thanks for watching, guys. You take care.